welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike, and now I'm finally back home from Gamescom 2018. Last week, I spent the whole week in Cologne and attended Gamescom, and my mission there was to try as much VR content as I possibly could. So throughout the two days I spent at the show, I had jam-packed appointments and meetings, and I'm pleased to report I've got some interesting stuff to share with you guys and girls. So in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down all the VR experiences that I tried at the show, and that includes the, the new games, uh, flying machines, treadmills, uh, haptics and then finally my best VR experience of Gamescom 2018. I'll put timestamps in the description down below so you can jump straight to the part that interests you the most if you wish to do so. So I hope you guys and girls enjoy this one and without further ado let's dive in. Let's start off with the games that I got to try at the show. First up is Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. Now I was actually quite disappointed with this one Graphically, it looked great, and the experience starts off with you face to face with one of these gigantic Panzerhuns, which is actually pretty terrifying in VR. But then you climb aboard the mechanical beast and take control of its movement and weaponry, which consists of a flamethrower and a dash attack. Now the movement system they implemented can be a bit intense as you use the left one to move forward and backwards and the right one to aim and move the direction of the head of the Panzerhund which is the cockpit which you're sitting in. And this is independent from your head's movement so at times when you're sort of moving uh, all at the same time it can be a bit disorientating. Now the gameplay was fun at first, flaming and biting my way through enemies, however when the waves kept on coming it then just got a bit repetitive and boring. Now I really hope that this game is just a small taste of things to come for this title. What I'd like to see is more machines to control, more mechanics to keep the gameplay interesting and varied, and of course a crazy and engaging story for which the franchise is famous for. Wolfenstein Cyberpilot will be coming later in 2019. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about Transference. I've been really intrigued about this title ever since it was announced some time ago. I got to play through the first level of the game whilst at the show. Now the game features a mix of video narrative and first person gameplay through an unsettling psychological thriller. You put yourself into the troubled mind of a test subject suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome and you have to piece together the story by switching between multiple perspectives in search for the truth. You have to repair their corrupted memories by solving mind-bending puzzles. Now this game is all kinds of messed up. It's a bit creepy, it's a bit unsettling, but overall really interesting. I can't say that after my level playthrough that I was any further forward in understanding what the heck was going on, however I'm really looking forward to playing more when this one releases. It's going to be releasing on the 18th of September for Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, PSVR and it will also have pancake versions of the game on Xbox, PlayStation and on Steam. So I'm going to wrap up the games part of this with my favourite game from the show and that was Fisherman's Tale. And it was a game born from a collaboration between Vertigo Games, Inner Space and Arte. Now the game revolves around a fisherman in a lighthouse who has a model lighthouse within that lighthouse and then a model lighthouse within that lighthouse. So it's kind of like Lighthouse Inception. Uh, the story is that there's a storm coming and your goal as the fisherman is to turn the lighthouse on to save people from the storm. Now it's a nice mix of puzzle and room escape gameplay and you have to find and use objects within the lighthouse to solve puzzles and progress. It's got a really unique puzzle design using scale, so if you look up uh, out of the roof of the lighthouse, you'll see a larger fisherman above you mimicking your movements. And then if you look down into the tiny lighthouse, you'll see a tiny fisherman also mimicking your movements. Uh, so you must use the scale to your advantage to solve a lot of these clever puzzles. It really makes my head hurt just thinking about how they put this game together, but it's really colourful, it has a unique puzzle mechanic, and ultimately was a lot of fun to play. Now this title will be coming to HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, Windows MR and PSVR later on this year. So keep an eye out for this one if you, like me, enjoy puzzle games in virtual reality. So let's move on to some of the sort of machines and contraptions that I got to try out at the show. And let's start off with some flying machines. Now the first up was from Hypersuit and they were showing their machine in conjunction with Airbus. Now their machine looked like a real substantial piece of kit and uh, the product was designed mainly for VR arcades. 
you straddle the actual seat of the sort of flying machine hyper suit like a motorbike and then rest your chest on the top so you're actually lying down horizontally you then put your arms on these sort of armrests which move and you can manipulate them and you can control the pitch uh, by moving your arms out on the armrests during my demo i played v racer hoverbike it's a uh, wipeout style game but it was really exhilarating experience to play it on the hyper suit and uh, have the sort of wind uh, also sort of added to add to the immersion of the game along with that i also got to try out their first party game which is called sky racers and that was just a simple demo where you fly through a city uh, flying through rings to compete for a high score now the experience itself was a bit intense, uh, I would say it's probably quite intense for newcomers to VR if they've never tried it before, however it will satisfy VR veterans like me and thrill seekers alike. The second flying machine I got to try was the Icarus. Now similar to the Hypersuit, you sort of lay down on it and you sort of have to shift your weight around to move around, but it's a little bit more stripped down than the Hypersuit because with the Icarus you have to rely on your core strength to balance rather than having the machine support you itself. Now the Icarus had two models of the machine on show, one which is designed for VR arcades and the second which is a bit trimmed down version which is aimed at home users. Now you sort of climb onto the device and shift your weight forward to level it out horizontally and then you have to shift your weight through your hips to go up and down and to turn and bank like a bird flying through the sky. Now, similar to the Hypersuit, I played their own proprietary game they designed where you had to fly through a series of rings through a canyon, uh, similar to that of Pilot Wings, and ultimately you were just competing to get a higher score. But I have to say, using this thing, you're going to have to have abs of steel because, like I said, it relies completely on your own core strength to balance. So let's move on to treadmills. Now one treadmill that has uh, been interesting in the VR market space for some time is the Omni. And I actually finally got to go hands on with the device. Now you have sort of slips which go over your shoes. They just kind of pull over your normal shoes or trainers. And then they've got a little uh, Omni tracker on the top of them. The Omni itself is a huge piece of kit. You have to kind of get strapped into it with a, a sort of collar that straps you in. And then you have a collar that wraps around your waist which sits on top of the frame so you can sort of rotate and move around that way. I played a custom game made specifically for the Omni where you have to infiltrate a base with an AI colleague and then things start to get a little bit supernatural and spooky, a bit like the classic game Fear if you remember that as a first person shooter. Now the game itself was uh, fun but I really felt like I had to lean forward and put all my weight on the top of the Omni to really sort of be able to move my legs uh, quickly enough to run. Uh, a couple of times I could feel my feet slipping actually off the back of the lip, uh, the dish that actually sits at the bottom of the Omni. This sort of product really seems like it's aimed at VR arcades than home users because I can imagine with all the equipment you're going to need and the space it's going to be very expensive. However, if you're interested in having that kind of treadmill experience at home, there is an alternative product to check out and that is called Cybershoes. Now, full disclosure, Cybershoes invited me to Gamescom and they paid for my trip. However, before I went to the event, I did say to them that if the product was bad, I would be honest with my audience and tell them exactly how I felt about it. However, I was pleasantly surprised. What you need to do is attach these plastic soles underneath your shoes and then fasten them with snowboard style straps. Uh, the shoes themselves have rollers underneath which transmit wirelessly to your PC. Then you sit on a 360 bar stool and move your feet forward and backwards to propel yourself forward in the game. Now I got to demo the shoes playing Doom VFR, Skyrim and Minecraft. Out of all those titles, Doom felt the best to play with the shoes and really added to the experience. The movement that you make with your feet translates so quickly in the game without any noticeable latency, so I was very impressed about that. The developers estimate that the Cyber Shoes will be around the €200 Euro mark and they plan to launch the product via Kickstarter later on this year. I have to say it really stacked up against the Omni experience which will cost a substantial amount more, so if you're looking for that treadmill experience at home, I think you need to keep your eye on Cyber Shoes. I'll be covering more about this product in detail on my channel later on in the week. So let's move on to Haptics. A company called B Haptics were showing off haptic vests, forearm attachments and facial interfaces. The demo that they showed me was their own game which was a kind of a similar version to Paintball in Rec Room. 
When you shot the gun in game, you could actually feel the recoil from the gun through your forearms, through the haptic uh, straps that were strapped to your forearms. And then when you got shot in the chest, the sort of ripples of the haptics would go through the vest that you were wearing. But the coolest thing uh, was when you actually got shot in the head. You felt the feedback in your head as they've got a replacement interface kit with their sort of haptic sensors inside. It was a really cool effect and really added to the immersion. I can imagine if this was implemented with further games in the future that we're really getting that step closer to that Ready Player One haptic boot suit that Wade Watts uses. Another really cool feature that I got to try out which was on a separate stand but also used the B Haptics technology was by a company called Thermo Real and their product was uh, in collaboration with B Haptics. They used the same sort of vest, same sort of forearm sensors. However, what they were doing was implementing the feedback of hot, cold and vibration as well. So they had a demo where you could actually touch uh, a fireball and you could really feel the heat through your forearms and on your head through a facial interface kit which uh, featured three pads which not only went hot but also cold and had haptic feedback as well. So you could touch a fireball, it would feel really hot on your forearm and on your face and then say if you then move to touching an ice block it would instantly get cold and this sort of uh, latency between you going hot and cold was really quick you could really sort of feel the difference very quickly uh, and uh, very low latency in terms of the way it sort of changes the most impressive part of the demo though was a shower where you could actually stand under a shower in combination with the haptics and the cold sensor going on and off rapidly you could actually feel like you were standing under a cold shower. It was really impressive. The company are actually looking to implement with B Haptics and have a version of the vest, uh, forearms and the facial interface kit that will also implement their Thermo Real technology as well. So these two companies are definitely two worth keeping an eye on. So finally, let's wrap this video up with my best of show, and that is Arizona Sunshine LB. Now the LB stands for location based, and out of all the experience I tried at Gamescom, it was the one that stood head and shoulders above the rest, and really took me by surprise. I had played Arizona Sunshine before, and the Dead Man DLC, which actually I wasn't that fond of. However, in this experience, you actually go into a room with up to four players who can play together in a physical space. It was kind of like a cube that they had laid out and they were using uh, the Vive 2.0 base stations for tracking, Vive Pro headsets for each of the players. Also, they had the Vive wireless adapter, which I'll talk a bit more in a bit. And then finally, you had Vive trackers on some handguns, which you had two of each. Now, the experience was essentially parts of the Dead Man DLC, but oh man, was it so much better this time around. It felt like an experience similar to that of The Void, where you can see your fellow players in virtual reality, and not once did I bump into another player or a wall, because like I say, you can see your other players, and as soon as you got close to a wall, the chaperone system let you know that you were getting close and that you had to back off a bit. Now at first it was the sort of similar sort of affair that we used to, fighting off waves of zombies, but then we had to navigate around the room to pull a lever, which then we dropped down into a lift. And this is where things got really interesting, because as you are physically moving around the play space using your feet rather than teleporting or using a stick for locomotion, when it actually came out of stepping out of the lift, which I had to do onto a girder because the lift got stuck halfway down the lift shaft, my brain was actually telling me like, be careful because if you don't make the step correctly, you're going to fall. And I really had this sense of height and scale. And I actually had to hop across uh, the gap onto the steel girder uh, for me to feel like I was doing it safely. They also used the, the layout of the square very cleverly. And this was sort of replicated within the virtual world. Now there were parts where two players would fight off zombies while a third would take uh, a moving platform to avoid obstacles and flip a switch which is on the other side of the room. It just worked so well and the dynamic of teamwork and the sort of zombies, the sort of threat, the experience and being there together just added to the immersion of the game. The whole thing lasted around sort of 10 to 15 minutes and I would say it felt more substantial than the experience that I'd previously had in the void playing Secrets of the Empire. 
The only thing it did lack was the attention to detail like tactile buttons, wind, heat and rumble. If they added those features, well, it would be an absolute game changer. And I really hope that Vertigo Games takes this Arizona Sunshine LB edition to shopping malls and VR arcades so people can try this out for yourself because it really was a really impressive demonstration of how the technology works. And whilst I'm talking about the technology, I just want to touch on the Vive wireless adapter. Now, this was the first time I'd ever got to try the wireless Vive adapter. You know, I previously au fait with the TP-Cast on the Oculus Rift, but I was really surprised at how comfortable the adapter was on the top of my head and how comfortable the pack was, the battery pack that actually sits on your belt, was very also lightweight and comfortable. And after playing for a couple of minutes, I completely forgot it was even there. Now, most impressive that they were tracking up to four people all using these wireless adapters in a single space and there was zero latency issues no problems at all so i'm actually very excited to check out this wireless module for myself and i'm considering buying it for the vive pro which i have here in the studio now now just so you're aware if you're not uh, aware already the wireless module will be set to launch on the 24th of september and is going to be available for around 300 us dollars just be aware that if you're using the Vive Pro, you're also gonna need uh, an extra adapter and it's gonna take up a PCIe slot in your PC for the wireless module to communicate with the headset itself. So overall, that was my best experience of the show. Very impressed with the Arizona Sunshine LB edition and also the Vive wireless module. So there we have it guys and girls, that is my roundup and summary of all the VR content that I got to try out at Gamescom 2018 this year. I'd love to know if you've got any comments or questions about any of the products that I've talked about in this video and maybe you want some more information and I'll try and answer as many questions as I can in the comments down below. I'd also like to know which of these uh, products and experiences I tried at the show that you're most excited about. So please put your thoughts in the comments down below. Hopefully I'll be back at Gamescom next year so hopefully there they'll be showing some more VR content and I can do something like this again. Make sure you uh, leave a like if you like the video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content and as always I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.